So, very curious what both parties are bringing. And let's hope my stream loads in. And it does. And we can see the, the model for the RD and then, guys, already. Thanks for the fish. So polite. <laughs> Alright. So, I'm gonna move out of the way. Um. MG is going to ask if the teams are satisfied with their positioning. And afterwards, we're going to start. Right, so with my ship on the steady course, we're going to have a quick look at what ships each team is bringing. Um, in the Dunphy team, Vaz and Essex, with a Renamee and Frigate. I think that's actually the first time, uh, MJ, that we've seen that kind of combination in this tournament, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, just give me a sec. I'm just uh, arranging these guys. I'll leave you to it. Team Sadanve is bringing so far two out of the three long gun, and even the Renamee has long guns as well. Very interesting. RDNN is bringing a Carinade Trink. Not really a surprise there. I mean, the broadside weight of a Carinade Trink is just immense. Normally equals two, if not more, enemy ships with long guns. Um, yeah, so uh, Carinade on the Cerberus as well, and Helger in his Trink obviously also has Carinades. Alright, so this is going to be like the fourth match between Longs and Carinades we're going to see, and so far. Four out of four have been won by the Karen A team. Will Dunvi be able to uh, swing it around? Take a win here? I don't know. Would be interesting to see though. So far, we see the teams just moving up into position, um, especially. They had, a, they had a very big gap. Yeah. Um, the uh, one of the teams there. I mean, it was it really was quite <laughs> quite a large gap between Infinito and, and Green. Yeah, it was. It's insane. I mean, they've been sailing for a minute and a half now, almost, and the gap still is immense. All right, and as soon as. This the starting signal has been given. We're gonna do a bit of a pre-match estimate, what MG and I think we're gonna be seeing and hoping to see as well. And afterwards, I reckon, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be long till the first cannonball start flying. Be sure to mention MG as soon as everyone's ready that they're gonna have until uh, yes, 40 I've got minutes. My yeah, I well, mean, it's still, it's still 45 minutes. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they have 45 minutes, the match will end at 41 in this case. Yes. Yeah. Roger that. Always nice to have you on stream, Tommy. Always nice. It's a nightmare, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful nightmare. Let's just uh All right. It sounds like RDNN is ready. Waiting for the Dunvi guys or did he All right, regardless, just give it a go. All right, what's your estimate? Come on, Angie, share your well, thoughts. I, I haven't even had a chance to uh, see the loadouts here. What oh, you're doing a robot. Uh, oh, oh, am I doing a robot? It's a poor timing for a robot. Oh, okay, give me a sec. <laughs> Radio. User disconnected from your channel. <laughs> As always, things are going great today. All 
Alright. joined your channel. Welcome back. Oh, thank you very much. Long story short, Danve, Frigate Essex Renemy. Unique combination to fire in tournament, they all have long guns. We have um Trink Trink Cerberus setup of RDNN and all have carronades. So it's gonna be the, the fifth, fourth or fifth match uh, between carronades and long guns and so far carronades have won every single time. They they've dominated, haven't they? Yeah. Carronades basically. We we'll see it again. Trink's just going straight at it, going at an intercept course. Because that, I've seen that mistake uh, being made look, by some look, people. Yeah, the guy, the guys with the longs, they're running downwind. They should be going the opposite direction if they have longs. Yep. I mean, the the thing is, Trink's are quite good downwind, right? Upwind, they're absolute crap. So instead of um, Denying them the good wind angle and going up when making it very difficult for them to get to you And it's it's actually sad that I have given this explanation. I think four times now, but They're gonna get some mild damage in on the sails admittedly. They do have quite the range still, but yeah, Regardless if they will just bring Helga down to like 80% before they're gonna be in carronade range uh, is it worth it? I mean, the... uh, sorry, go ahead. Wait, 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 I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering what they're they're trying to achieve now. I mean, are they going to run back up wind now? I think that I think they're t turning up wind, aren't they? No, Go close not yet. Uh, well, Vaz is. Vaz, Vaz is, is uh, yeah. Almost but, close hold now. Infinito but, seems to want to go in a straight line at this point, but. At this point, I'm wondering why you're doing it now. Because you could have done this from the start and would have a much longer distance to shoot. And right now, they're just yeah, they're, they're going in the wind, and uh, Infinito needs to be really careful. Because if he's going to slow down much more, he's going to be caught up very quickly by the enemy trinks. Then again, the trinks are also matching the, 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 the wind direction for Infinito instead of just going after green Ultralisk. I mean, why make it yourself difficult if you have carronades? Why slow down? I wish I had the answer. Well, yeah, don't we all? <laughs> well, it it's at least... I wouldn't say the kite until now has been perfect, but it's at least better than what we have seen. And the carronade charging group you know, they still have to close the gap, but I don't think they have like any rigging perks or anything along that line. Seems like uh chain and ball hitting the sails just does normal damage. You know, if uh if RD and N uh turned on to a a broad reach now mm -hmm. um in fact a beam reach they could cut off green ultralisk. Yep. Quite easily. Because Infinito and Vaz at this point are content to just sail away. Why? Because green has three shots at the sails. Right? This is purely winning time. I think we've seen it in the FRL uh, uh, match versus Ruffs, I think it was, where Delore, I think, was just placed out of position while two of his guys were run away for the guys chasing them. Delore had three shots at the sails and effectively could kite them. And you see it now as well, the Rename is just, albeit slowly, pouring in fire into the sails and allowing yeah. Vaz and Infinitu to use their better sail percentage to get the distance again. This is good kiting. We have not seen, well, efficient might be the better term. The, I th yeah, I was, I was just going to say, the, the, uh, the, the kiting that we've seen so far, the guys have used up a lot of energy uh, turning support and starboard so that they could uh, get both broadside o broadsides off as quickly as possible uh, these guys seem to have been a little bit more patient they've not used as much energy and so they've given themselves more time to uh, to actually you know get some long distance shots in yep but well, that's the beauty of carronades if you go upwind right with your long guns the people that are downwind with carronades have an incredible range and you see that Infinito is down to 91% which in itself is not critical right but the goal of the kiters should be 
to force the guys chasing them right now to spend their sail repair. That's what they need yeah. to do. They need to put them in well, a position... Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go on. They need to put them in a position where um, they have around... Well, even if it's 85% sail, but the enemy goes around 70. In order to keep closing the distance as which they are now, they need to expand the sail repair. And as soon as they do that, that's when the card can succeed in. Because then what you do, even if you're close range, you sail away again, or at least try to, and give broadsides into the sails. Cripple one or two guys, preferably one, and then just go after the other two. And then you can brawl it out. Or at least that's my view on how you should do it. I mean, the interesting thing is that Vaz, who is in the Trincomalee, uh, he's he's been Essex. letting Infinito and Green. Oh, sorry, Essex. Uh, he's been letting those two guys expend the energy because they're lighter, they're smaller than he is. They can get away with expending the energy while staying distant from the enemy. Whereas, as soon as he starts doing this zigzag to get his broadsides onto the enemy, he burns so much energy that he's going to be caught up by them. So. In fact, we're probably going to see the first broadside that Vaz has fired in, what, five, six minutes? Look at this, though. This is either a very small play or one that could use some polishing. Because Infinito, you know, 83% sales, he's going to get caught. Right? It's that simple. But they have split off green ultralisk to one side, and Vaz actually sailed upwind again. So, kind of leaving Infinito in the middle for them to catch. Well, maybe maybe this is all part of their their grand battle plan. The the faster enemies are, are, are further downwind. Um, Vaz has got the wind, and uh, you know, and and obviously with the range that he has to Coldthorn, which is his nearest opponent, uh, he can quite happily pop away at that guy's sails mm -hmm. um, without fear of being caught. Really, at this point, we're. This is interesting. Now is the time in which I would say pop your repair as the RD and N crew, right? You're close to Infinito, and if you pop it now, you can actually catch him. And in the meantime, you got shots on Vasa's sails, which is excellent, but you do need that extra bit of speed because they aren't closing that fast anymore on in Infinito. No, they're not. Unle uh, unless they have the, the rigging expert perk, which gives you an extra small percentage of repair so instead of 25 percent you get maybe i don't know 30 35. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, yeah. so they might be waiting for that you know they might could be waiting for their sales to go down to 70 percent rather than 75. could very well be i'd always argue that you know if you're being shot just pop it slightly above so worst case you end up at 100 so maximum fishy efficiency you just lose like one or two percent and worst case, because this is the point uh, at which they're gonna really feel the hurt of their sales being yeah. torn like this. Yeah. Hey, the the the, the Danve guys are doing very well to to work these uh, work these sales down. They're catching them quite nicely at the moment, aren't they? They are. They are doing it quite efficiently. Then again, I must also say that RDNN seems to allow them to kite. And it's not meant in the bad way, it's just you currently aren't putting up the pressure, right? You can get one of the guys, but instead of getting him, you're just content with a bit of chasey cat and mouse. And I'm not sure if that's the best play at this stage. I mean, Helgar at this point, he might yeah, have... Yeah, 68%. And he popped his silver bar, I think, because his sails passed me. out. There yeah, he goes. He yeah. Good play. And I'm so waiting. I wonder, if, I wonder if Cold Thorns. Yep, there goes Cold Thorns sail rep. There you go. I think they've realised that they are close, but they need to close in faster. They just need that little extra bit because they're they're into them now. They yep. are into Infinito and Green. Uh, Vaz is quite happily sailing off into the into the sunset. He's he's still got lots of range to play with. I mean, and that's fine. But for RDNN at this point, it becomes interesting as well because you see. As soon as they get shot in on Infinito, right, while they're only being shot at their own sails in the meantime, that's a good trade for RDNN. And I think, yeah, Infinito popped a sail repair as well. He's like, I'm not gonna sit there and be 
yeah bait for my team so I'm hoping Coldthorn maybe has a chain broadside loaded it's gonna do like a left twirl in a second and just absolutely did rip the sails off either the the Rename or the frigate because the the advantage that the the the, the Dunvey guys had which was the kiting at range and keeping them at range now has yeah. been mitigated yes yeah and I don't think it's since you're so close at this point it's tough to discuss whether it's oh, that was a good broadside though so I'm just gonna retract my statement was going to say if it's smart to continue shooting sail, but that was that was tasty. All damage you do now is damage that's going to stay. And shooting balls into that sails. Was, that was a big, big broadside miss from Carl Thorne in Infinito there. Yep. He, he missed about two thirds of his broadside. I think he was probably on the wrong fire mode. Um, he probably should have been on unlocked and he was probably unlocked or something. Um, because a lot of his his shot went to the uh, to the starboard side of Infinito and killed a few mackerel or something. I'm 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 quite surprised that they didn't decide to load chain at that point. Ah, uh, so am I. I mean, he's firing ball into the into the stern of Vaz and not really doing a very good job. And the angle was pretty pretty acute, really, for mm -hmm. for firing ball into the hull. You know what it's like. You know, it, it, as soon as you get a a high angle of, of impact it's or rather a low angle of impact yeah it does nothing it does nothing it's a wasted shot and it's, but look, it, they've, they've, they've isolated infinito quite nicely here I mean they've done that very well but they have to realize that fast and green ultra risk will continue to shoot their sails as soon as they're down to like 50 or 60 percent then there's no way they can give chase and looking at it now, both the trinks have expanded their repair and always mm -hmm. yep. almost half down the eighty percent again. And they're not doing that much to Infinito in return. I You say see Infinito's Infinito's did nicely here because he's running close hold. Yep. I mean he's he's running the ideal kind of angle to, to extend away from these carinade trinks. But uh, they're allowing the, him. They are. Yeah, they are. But do 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 the Danve guys have a better battle plan than RDNN? It looks like it because at the moment the RDNN guys just sat in between um, the the Danve fleet. I mean, they're gonna get absolutely shredded by the chain uh, from the long guns of Vaz. You see it, eighty-one percent, eighty-three percent, and they're turning to chase, but they can't chase. Vaz still has a sail repair, and he can just outsail them by default. Um, I'm pretty sure that not shooting chain into the sails of Infinito, therefore, for that that could have been their card, right? That could have been the card to use to play to force Danvi to get back towards them. But instead, they decided, or maybe they changed their mind. I, I hope they have chain on the left broadside. Well, they've still got Infinito. I mean, Infinito oh, made a, the wrong decision there. He actually turned back into the attacking force. I mean, he should have just kept going the way he was going. You're doing a robot. Now... Okay. Oh, well, okay. Sorry. Sorry to you interrupt. Will be assimilated. <laughs> your base User belongs to us. From your channel. User joined your channel. Welcome back. Yeah, hello. So, uh, as I was saying, I think Infinito made completely the wrong decision there yeah. to actually turn back straight into the RDNN fleet, and he got he got you know he got mauled there a bit. He should have just kept going because he was out running. Clute. Oh shit! The oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, and dear. now it's on because Vaz and I. Green are just they sailing have, away. Have, yeah, they have completely isolated him now. He should have just kept going the way he was going. He shouldn't have, have turned back into them like that, I don't think. That was a bad move. Um, I'm actually... You know what? I think Infinito should have turned or moved the other way, in hindsight, right? To tr try and link up with his mates. Because the trinks that were to be chasing him were very slow. It damaged in the sails, he couldn't repair. 
But this has changed everything. This means... They, they, are, they are gonna take this guy to the yep. cleaners, aren't they? It's gonna be a three-on-one, and they'll just rip him apart. And the biggest problem that those other two chinks have got is that this battle is now taking place upwind, and it's gonna yep. take them ages to get here. Assuming that they do actually decide to try and get here, it's gonna take them a long time. So basically, Infinito is is on his own, 3v1, and he's got no chance. Yeah, I think uh, it's fair to say that unless something major happens, like a mass of a drink falls down, but the just shooting chains so that's not likely. It's a game set a match for uh, uh, for RDNN, as in they've got this one in the pocket. I mean, all they have to well, do after this is just wait. I mean, they can just wait until. Yeah. You see what what uh, what Infinito should do now is you should actually turn uh, turn Clue Tommel into wind and board him and switch ships because at least that will give him some uh, flexibility and maneuverability. He should capture that surprise and uh, try and rejoin his friends. Ooh, go fire ship. Oh, fire ship. In the name of the pick cloud, go fire ship in between two trinks that can't sail away from you. He's slowing, slowing down. Oh, he's he's slowing, down. slowing down. Oh, yes, please. Why is he, no, why is he slowing down, though? He's speeding up now. He sees... Oh, please. Is he still on fire? Oh, this this would be a, this would take her like three ships if it went now. He needs to repair his hull though in the meantime, so he stays afloat. Oh, this would be so cool if he were to take this out. Emotional roller coaster plot twist all the way. Don't break your bowsprit off. Don't break your bowsprit off. You need that one. Why is he turning away? Why I, not? I don't know. I don't know. Why is he not going fire? I think he's trying to rescue it. What? No. Don't. <sighs> Just. He, yeah, he must be. He must be trying to rescue it. Why not he's try? Sending, he's sending downwind now to his <laughs> men, his, uh, his his mates. He was so close towards. And he's popped his repair. He's popped his repair as well. Um, I don't want to say that it would have been a good play, but I think it would have been a bloody excellent play. It would have play. been perfect. Yeah. How close those three were to him, it would have been the perfect play. Absolutely perfect. I mean, the trinks have. Because demastered. Yeah. yeah. Demastered. He's. What's he gonna do? I mean, the only option that he had, other other than turning into a fire ship and killing everyone, was capture the surprise. Maybe. I mean, he has expanded his hull repair. He's low. He has expanded yeah. the sail repair. Can't and now get proper speed. Spreading. He's he's turned survival off now. Yeah. So now he's decided to turn fire ship, but he's probably too slow to catch anyone up, and he's yep. blown his chance there. I think he has. Unless he gets lucky and Ince explodes and maybe gets Helga on the way out, I think he would have been... Yeah, would have been better to just go straight in and go fire ship there. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the proximity that the other three ships had to him, there was no way that they, they, uh, they would have got away in time, I don't think. I mean, I, I get it, He's, uh, the, the, he, the frigate has lost a mass, but then again, the drinks are at 66% sale, while Infinitus at 59 he was next to them, and they were sailing up when... If he wouldn't have survival on initially, I dare say he would have exploded in the middle of them. Or at least yes. close enough to yeah. demast them. He's, he's gonna go in a second, did he? Yeah, and now it's That's kinda pointless fire. to do. Cause uh, now... Yeah. I think Helga's gonna get away with this, to be honest. I don't think he'll suffer even one bit. I don't, I don't, think, he'll, I don't think he will. I think he's out of range. That was a bit of... That was the chance, I think, of Dunphy to just turn it around. Yes. Toggle yeah. survival off. I I know people keep saying it wouldn't have worked, but I'm fairly sure it would have. Well, we've we've seen we've seen a chink get completely demastered yeah. and decrewed in one of the other matches, so we know that it works. I mean, I've done it myself in PvP, and it's it's fun to do. You know, you lose your ship, obviously, but there you go. <laughs> Regardless if it wouldn't have worked or not, his decision to go in at the second time was not a good one. If he would have uh, done it, or would have tried it, he should have done it at the first attempt. Yeah, absolutely. When he caught fire. When were, yeah, when they were really close together. Yeah, 
stick to them, go at a bit of a better wind angle, so just go beam reach while the trings are still trying to get up wind. I'm amazed that this thing hasn't blown up yet, to be honest. Yeah, now it's taking quite long, I must admit. It is taking a long time. But then again, he could have shaven a minute off. And maybe, the thing is, panic does a lot to you, right? If you're close to a fire ship, and you know he's coming for you, you can't sail away <laughs> fast, you're going upwind, that'll make people brown trail all the way, right? Yeah. I'm fairly sure the RDN then guys might have, you know, squealed and just done some I'm random sure, maneuvers. I'm yeah, I'm sure Helga shits himself. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure, but I do think I can spot some brown paint on the back of his ship now. Yeah, there's the small streaks <laughs> dropping down about there, isn't there? So, the question now is, what are they, uh, I mean, they, they've done a good job on the sales, 69, 59%, 56%. They're just going to kite all the way, aren't they? Well, what is there to do for... Uh... Dante, I actually admire the, the, the RDNN guys that they are going to go in, whilst effectively they, yeah, they can take it somewhat easy, you know, just go battle sails into the direction of Vaz and the other guy, I mean, they can't catch up anyway, so they're going to get kited all the way. But yeah. I, I don't think it. I mean, look at the health and look at the broadside power of the RD and N guys. There's no way Dunve is gonna, you know, gonna be able to just get back in, pop a few broadsides and try and win, unless they put like a combined broadside into one of the trinks and insta sink it via leaks. I think it's done. And Infinito still has to explode. No, oh, Infinito actually has managed to quell his fire shock and is taming the fire. The only downside yeah, being he's, he's used his yeah he's used yeah. his rep and he's sinking slowly. Um, all he can do is hope to put some damage into the sails. But I mean the sails are already pretty much shredded. There's there's not much else you can do to sails in that condition, is there? No. I mean, he could use the water that's currently in his hole to put out the flames faster, but that's it. The issue that Danve have now is they can only count so much because the Ring of Death is obviously uh, a, a major factor in these battles. They can't keep running. They can't keep counting, uh, especially if the, the RDNN guys cut them off. Well. The problem Dunphy is going to face, right, they're shooting the sails currently, and that's fine. And they'll even demaster Trink at some point, I'll take, uh, I, I, I won't be surprised. But the problem is going to be, even a demastered Trink, right, what his mates will just do is stick around the demastered guy. And then they'll have to get in, 2 versus 3, against 3 RDNN guys who still have all their hull repair, and nearly all their side structure anyways, and who have triple, quadruple, the the total broadside power that Danve has at this point. Just let that sink in for a second. Would be very impressive if they manage. And it seems they're still shooting chain into the sails they, of Helga. They, they should be, they should have switched to Paul a yep. long time ago. They're not, they're not going to demast anything at this range. They're not going to demast anything. They should be. They should be looking at the heel of the trinks, knowing that the the trinks are healed over away from them, so they've got a nice waterline shot. Exactly. And they should be pouring ball into the uh, into the waterline there. So just for the people tuning in, um, I think there's still 19 minutes on the clock. If that's correct. I think it lasted yeah. until we have had. 26 minutes now. 25, sorry. 25 minutes. Just gone. 25 minutes. Yeah, so we and we've got 20 minutes left, yeah. Fair enough. What so did we, you say? We 19. play until 41. Until uh, there's 41 left on the timer on above. But yeah. Well, look no, at I, this. I, start, I started my stopwatch as soon as I said go, so... Fair enough. I'm, I'm going to go off the stopwatch rather than the, the battle clock. 
yeah, it works as well. But, you know, look at green. I think green is just going for an all-out last charge. Well, yeah. Or maybe just trying to cut I off say, Helga, but... He might be going for a rake. You never know. <laughs> yeah, but if Helga turns left, right, and pours her 800-pound uh, broadside into into green, I mean, what's going to be left of that Renome? <laughs> Realistically speaking. It's like Helga doesn't even care about green. Nice. Oh, now he's turning to starboard. And green's actually shooting ball now at uh, Coldthorn. Cold, Coldthorn? Not sure how to pronounce it. Yeah, Coldthorn. You know, I wouldn't say that saving your BR at this point would be a good move. Because, you know, you would get some very boring gameplay. It's not really the spirit of the tournament, but... It sure as hell feels somewhat... Hopeless from the Dunphy perspective. Maybe that's the best way of phrasing it. Yeah. Infinito is now taking water. It's gonna be a matter of minutes before the score becomes official 1 to 0. I just noticed, it seems like Clothommel doesn't manual sail when turning. Well, maybe he's, uh, oh, there maybe he he's goes. sacrificing for turn rate um, <laughs> to maintain speed. Could very well be. Because it's, it's, always, it's always a compromise. You know, you can get one or the other, you can't get both at the same time. You either have turn rate or you have speed. Though speed wouldn't be a bad thing if a Renamay is on your ass. But Absolutely. That, that green guy is gonna eat a broadside now. He's he might try Why is Helga not trying to get a broadside in on green? Is he going for his right broadside then? Why didn't he utilize his left one? I wonder. He might have uh, he might have had a sudden change of heart with regards to his uh, loadout. I go, oh, what, what, am I, what have I got grape loaded for? <laughs> <laughs> could could be. Yeah, not sure what to say at this point though. I think it's just gonna be a brawl. And the brawl is gonna be heavily in favor of Hardy and then just yeah. sheer broadside weight is gonna force the Dunphy guys out. You know what would be an interesting mechanic, right? If you if you were for example able to repair a friend. As in spend your repair kit uh, on a friend. Yeah, but I mean the, the logistics of doing something like that are, are too far-fetched, I think. Well, if you're both forced to wait during the entire repair, or at least the oh, guy nice receiving point. it. Yeah, indeed it was. Well, yeah, it's... Yeah. Would, it's... would stimulate maybe a bit more of group play, because then, you know, you, you can actually have another physical perk of having someone on your side. Or you can help people out. I, I, I was just as thinking in, about as it. Almost like a support <laughs> ship role. Hey, you, you could say so, but it could also be the case that if you get focused down by, say, three guys and your masks are completely off, that I go ahead and just use my spare rigging parts to fix up your ship. If then I get focused, I'm screwed. But at least it mitigates the damage to some extent. Well, but would you have it where the where your ship had to be physically next to and yes. alongside your 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 partnership? Yeah. 
At least in my mind. I, I, I just, you know, it's a quick line of thinking whilst we're watching this battle. Um, it just popped in my head. It, it'd certainly be uh, an interesting mechanic. Uh, 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 but, y you know, uh, the thing is that, like, as you said, uh, all that's going to happen is that the, the enemy are going to focus fire you. Because they know that you're going to go and help them. And do you benefit? at all because you you're using your rep kit to put somebody else's mask back up or put yards back on or you know fix some rigging or sails mm -hmm. and then that leaves you with nothing true by the way whilst we're at it um green is very low on his right left side and would be surprised if he's not going to pop his repair soon I think he. I think he already has. Oh actually. yeah, he has. He has. Yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah. Uh, by my by my watch, you've got uh, thirteen minutes thirty seconds remaining. That sounds accurate. Well, I'll, I'll what I'll do is when it when we get to ten minutes, I'll I'll put a little thing in chat to say ten minutes remaining. They'll appreciate that, I reckon. It is so strange to see this. Uh, the kiting itself did kind of succeed, right? I think it did. I think they did well, actually. Uh, I think that the, the biggest mistake that they made was they didn't take wind. They just ran downwind and used the speed of the enemy and the trink, who uh, made very few maneuvers to save energy and um, and just you know ran off. And, and then got stuck into the fight because at the end of the day as soon as you start moving that rudder around or your sails you, you're burning energy you're burning speed exactly uh, and if the if your opponent is just sailing straight <laughs> and not doing anything they're gonna catch up with you you know it's a simple matter of physics assuming that the you know the ships are relatively equal in speed I did like the bait that Dunphy did at some point you know let the other uh, let it, let the enemy team chase two of you guys and in the meantime one of your guys is just, you know, quite casually, not really significantly, but still uh, enough damage for it to be worth it. Just shoot the enemy sails and pepper them down. Good point. Maneuver raises in the in the chat itself is that it's strange uh, that it is strange to take a frigate into a kiting composition, given the speed of that ship, and knowing what the the average ships of the tournament are, which are mostly either trings, bell pools, frigates, uh, sorry, uh, surprises or services. Which yeah, is it, it is a particularly point. slow ship for a for a frigate, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's not designed as as a, as a pursuit ship, I don't think. And this it's is just a bit of a tank. This is beautiful though, because here you can see the, the the result of the kiting. The trings are just doing nothing. They're just sailing around and they're just yeah. sitting pretty. Whilst in the meantime, Faz is bo uh, putting some uh, adequate damage into Clotom at this point. The bad thing for Dunphy is then that that Green has taken so much damage that he is going to sink inevitably. But theoretically, just wishful thinking, with the the lacking speed of the Trinks, they could have tried and maybe focused the Cerberus a bit, which they are doing now. And if over an extended period of time they might have made it difficult for him. But yeah. Wouldn't really say that it was a close call. Yeah, as soon as Infinito got got cornered and he made that um he made that error turning back into them, uh I think that was it, really. That was the real turning point. I think they'd kited really well up to then, uh, but that that kind of hammered the nail in certainly his coffin and uh, and the teams as well, unfortunately. 
think you're correct. I mean, what they're doing right now is nice. They have the speed, the, the one speedy, or the one somewhat speedy guy on the enemy team. They, they're currently fighting, well, somewhat two on one, let's just call it one and a half on one. If, if at best, I think, you know, again, as I said, somewhat wishful thinking. If they were to kill, like, Clothomel, they might, you know, get a one. Uh, one ship's loss in each team out of it, but then they would still lose battle rating wise because they lost a frigate. I think so that's what they're going to try and do. Is it? I think they're going to. I think they're going to do what they can to actually maintain the ships that they have mm -hmm. at the moment, whilst still maintaining, a, you know, a decent showing in the, in the battle. Um, because at this point, you don't want you don't want to see people get you know thrown out because they're just you know, run off into the distance. Mm -hmm. To add what I said, unless Green is going to do like a full on Tom's, I don't think he'll be able to survive for nine minutes. I don't think he's. I don't think he's going to be here in nine minutes' time. But this is good. What the what Dan V is doing right now is. Focusing fire on one guy, utilizing the battle speed, getting a poor wind angle in for the Trinks with their current sail percentage. This is this is what they should have been doing. And if the frigate was yeah. alive, yeah. they would have won this. Because they would have been outside the range of the Trinks, just blasting down, either trying to demast them, or just slowly packing away the hull and at some point just going in with double charge or double shot. Yeah. I mean, the, the only thing that the, the Trinks have got going for them is their four bow chasers. I mean, that is literally yep. the only input they are making to this fight at the moment. Simply because of the, the damage to the cells that was done by the kiting earlier. It's actually quite strange, and now there's Demas incoming on Vaz if he's not careful. Because the trings are now within range that they can actually properly utilize the broadsides again, then. Well, honestly, I reckon it's gonna be six minutes uh, of running. Running, shooting a broadside, and running even more. Yeah, they, they need to be careful though. We, we don't want to. We don't want to have them. In a in a position where they are literally just kiting and saving themselves and not getting stuck into the engagement, because as the rules state, if you just run and kite for the duration, uh, you will forfeit. Yeah, that's correct. And I must admit, compared to some of the uh, very close gameplay we saw yesterday, I think it was, which was tense, you were on the tip of your seat every minute throughout the entire battle. This, this hit and run kind of, uh, well, kiting and run strategy is a tad less exciting. And it's a bit more difficult to comment about as well, I've noticed. That random is not looking healthy. That really is going to be a matter of minutes now. Yeah, he's done, isn't he? Yeah, if they get a few more shots into him and get a leak or two, then it's. Oh, but look at the uh, look at Vaz. Look at his yeah, broadside go. Taking a lot of damage there. Yep. Okay, that's five minutes remaining in the battle. Judging by the speed of green, I think this is it for him. I think we're gonna see the kill message any second now. Yeah, I agree. 
He's swabbing his decks with uh, more than. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He has a More swimming pool. <laughs> yep. There it is. And that officially marks. Well, if if Vaz continues fighting the way he is, there's there's no question that he is staying in the battle. Um, in my opinion, um, there's going to be absolutely no reason to. Uh, to question whether he's just trying to run and kite, mm -hmm. because he's he's easily in range of the uh, the carronades of the opposition. He's doing an excellent job, right? In he's, his situation, he he has. He's got four minutes. Well, just under four minutes to survive if they want to keep that. Uh, if they want to reduce the amount of BR that RDNN get from this battle. I mean. Look at the the damage he's taking at this range with carronades. I mean, that's that's a lot of HP that he's he's the losing on that starboard side. Yeah, that's the thing. Carronades, if they can reach you, they nearly always penetrate, and that's why I continuously w was questioning why the teams with long guns decided to get in a medium range brawl with carronades, where they were like, we're probably out range of them, but they'll. Over time, we'll get two or three broadsides hit on them, and it still would have lost half the side armor. And it's it's sometimes painful to see. But you see, at this point, the the sail damage on fast is enough to allow the trains to continuously ta uh, tag and shoot him. They've done a good job of actually getting his, his sails down to that point, so they can they can at least be on an equal footing. Yeah. Um, it, it's almost a bit surprising because if they want to whitewash, they should have just stuck to ball because you saw the amount of damage that Coldthorn was doing to Vaz yep. with his ball shot to to uh, to Vaz's hull. You know, if they wanted to sink him, they they could have quite easily. I think. I think RDNN is content with the with the lead slash victory they have achieved here, because well, it's no spoiler really, um, and they're just now just trying to show Faz out the door. Like there you go. You know, you want you want to sail away for a minute, try and hang on to your ship for a minute. That's fine. Here you go. I think that's somewhat what's going on at this point. You are shooting, but well, yeah, he'll he'll keep his ship. They won't get the full 500, I don't think. No, no, for sure not. Unless they are in boarding. I don't know how it works if you initiate boarding before the timer runs out, because you can't really disengage, can you? No, no. I th I think a boarding would have to be completed in order for it to count as a victory before the actual battle finished. Any boarding action that is is sort of running at the time that the battle finishes is tough shit, you know. Mhm. Mm I I think that's fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah. To add to that, you in forty seconds, I assume you're gonna tap this match out. Yeah. Well, it's it's forty five seconds actually. Is Carinates IMBA? I'm not familiar with that abbreviation. I don't know what IMBA is. Irregardless, if his question is... Oh, Freddy answers in the chat, not balanced. I don't think carronades are uh, by default unbalanced. I just think that it's relatively easy to get to enemy ships. Right? Chain is effective. <laughs> God damn it, Tom's. <laughs> and that's the end of the battle. GG to both teams.
I think a victory broadside from Cloto over there. Uh, post battle screen. Yep, I've grabbed one as well. Lovely. And I'm just gonna jump out already. Yeah, me too. I think that Freddy sums it up quite nicely as well. Even after kiting though, there probably isn't enough time to uh, sink the enemy. Just to get the broadsides down and finish uh, off what they're gonna repair. Um, is it your intention to bring both parties in the room real quick? By the looks of it, sure. one, of, yeah. one of the Dunvey guys, Infinito, has left. Um, okay, he might have had to shoot off, but uh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pop into each channel and see if you want to come in and have a chat. Sounds good. User left your channel. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. Hello. User Hello. joined your channel. Hey. User joined your Hello. channel. I must say, I think both teams showed something very impressive tonight. I think Dan for you had the first effective kite we've seen this entire tournament. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, that was kind of the plan as well. Unfortunately, Infinto made the mistake of going he... upwind and getting caught well, alone. So I th I think no, th I think the mistake that he made was that he was fine. He was he was doing well. He was running close hold. The mistake that he made was he turned around and went back through the battle line of the RDNN guys. If yeah, he had kept guy. going, he would have been okay. Yeah, that's um, exactly what I mean. That point exactly yeah, there. That was the moment that that kind of cost you the battle. Unfortunately, I think. Yeah. And then also the timer, we didn't actually take the time into consideration uh, that we would actually most likely run out of time before we could sink any significant amount of the RT9 guys. Sure, yeah. Well, so. good, well played guys. Yeah, it was yeah. a great oh, battle to yeah, watch, I, was I really impressed. enjoyed it. Bit it of was a civil really, war, but it was awesome, yeah. <laughs> really hard to keep uh, up with you guys. Well yeah. Done. Yeah, well, Carinades, Carinades versus uh, Carinades versus Infinito's masts. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just snapped it like a twig, didn't it? Yeah, well, it was a good game. It Definitely. was. It was really good. Yeah, really enjoyed we, that. Yeah, we uh, we decided to try the longs, even though we were in during our like small training sessions, we figured that Carinades would still be most effective, but we still thought, well, what the hell, it might work. Why did you why did you run downwind at, at the beginning of the match? Why did you why did you go downwind straight away? Well, it was mainly due to the fear if if we went like straight at him or upwind, um, we would get caught solo. Like we would get caught one one of us would get caught by the start of the match. So we would rather run downwind and let them close in a bit before we would go hey, wake up. more upwind to slow them down again, hopefully doing a lot of damage with the, uh, with the chain shots. Right, okay. So it's actually the fear of like realizing, that, okay, they have carnades as we kind of feared, and then if we go directly at them or upwind straight away, they might actually ca catch up to us with the chases of the, uh, the drinks. Sure. Yeah, it was, yeah, really, uh, yeah, it was good. Really, really good battle. Quite enjoyed that. Gotta yeah, say. So, yeah, so did we. Definitely. And I already had respect for the Cerberus, but it is quite a little tank. Especially after the 5.0 mechanic. It can bounce quite a bit of damage. It's not a bad ship. People underestimate it. Yep, I it's loved it when it was still in the old damage model, but this one it's even gets even better. I mean, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an Essex and not get wrecked in three salvos. Yeah. I decided mostly to go for leaks when we had like you soloed out due to the f timer and our current situation. So the leaks seemed at the time as the best suggestion to get you down quickly. Unfortunately, you had the wind in me, so. Well, I have seen instances where a Serb got what was it, twelve, sixteen leaks, and still managed to float around. Yeah. yeah. So it all depends on your on the amount of crew you have. 
dedicated for your survival and your pump. All right, I think that unless someone wants to add something, concludes this bell. Um, oh, just just one more very quick question. Yeah. Uh, why take the frigate? Was it was it literally the only ship that you could fit into the battle rating limitations with the other two ships that you wanted to take in, or was that was that like a core aspect of your tactic? Uh, it was kind of one of the only ships we had left because we like we wanted the Essex over the Trink due to the horrendous heal off the Trink, uh, and then we wanted to run away for the speed. So it was like sure. go for the frigate because it has the 18s or maybe the Velpool, but it only got the 12, and at range they're not really doing a sufficient job. So. Okay, cool. Right. All right. Yeah. That yeah, marks the job. end of it. So for the people watching the stream, thank you for tuning in, and there's ought to be a battle in our ish, so uh, yeah, be sure to watch then. Alright, take care.